Hello, the other thing we can do with factoring is we can start to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So we're going to look at that today with a couple examples from Delta Math and then you'll be ready for your Delta Math assignment. To start out, to solve a quadratic by factoring, you need to set your quadratic equal to zero. And then you are going to find the solutions and they're also sometimes called the zeros of the equation. And to find those zeros, we're going to use factoring. Now before we get to the factoring part, uh, we are going to use a property of math called the zero product property. The zero product property says that if you multiply two numbers, a times b, and it's equal to zero, then either a has to be zero or b has to be zero. And in the case with quadratics, our a and our b are going to be our factors when we factor our quadratics. So we'll take a look at this first one. I'm going to show my work below in this space over here. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your quadratic set equal to zero. So I'm going to do that next. So we've gone ahead and got the 6x added over because I'm going to do an inverse operation. That's going to make negative 5x and then I subtract my 5 over. That's going to make 0, which I don't need to write. So now the next thing we'll do is we will factor our quadratic. And our quadratic only has two terms and it has a common x. So we're going to make two uh, factors by factoring out the GCF. So the x is going to come out and then we're left with x minus 5 equals zero. So we're taking that common factor of x, factoring it out. Now we have our two factors. We have a factor of x, we have a factor of x minus 5. So here's where we're going to use the zero product property. So in order for x times x minus 5 to be zero, either x has to equal zero or x minus 5 equals zero. And then we do any extra algebra we need to do to solve those out. So in this case over here, x would equal 5 because 5 minus 5 would equal zero. So there's my two solutions, x equals zero, x equals five. Now to enter my solution, I'm gonna hit zero, and then I'm gonna hit a comma to make a separate equate, a separate solution, x is zero, x is five. And I hit submit, and there's my two solutions. So then you can see, after you get done, you can see the work being done, very similar to what we did. Our next problem is already set equal to zero, so I'm just going to rewrite my equation to the right in the space. So we're back looking at a trinomial now, and a trinomial with an a term of one. So this is what we looked at when we were factoring in day one. So in order to do this, I'm looking at how can I multiply to positive 10 and then at the same time add to negative 11. So to do that, I'm going to multiply by negative 1 negative 10 because a negative times a negative will equal positive 10 and then adding negative 1 negative 11 will give me excuse me negative 1 and negative 10 will give me that negative 11. So now I'm ready to write my factors. So any trinomial is going to factor into two binomials where these uh, first terms here are going to be x and x. Then I just enter in my numbers x minus 1 x minus 10. Now we're going to use the zero product property. So this x minus 1 is like our a up here. x minus 10 is like our b. Now I'm going to set each of those equal to zero. And when your x term is, or if your first term is x squared and you just get the x minus 1, x minus 10, you can kind of do some mental math. So 1 minus 1 is going to make the first factor zero. And then 10 minus 10 is going to make the second factor zero. So my two answers are going to be 1 and 10. And when you submit your answer, you will see their work as well. And there is going to be our solution. Our next problem, we have another trinomial, and it's already set equal to 0. Now, if it wasn't set equal to 0, I would just move all my terms to the left side of the equation to get my, my uh, quadratic set equal to 0. So I'm going to rewrite that, and then we'll start to factor. So here we have a trinomial again. So we'll have a set of two binomials with the leading term x. And the little number riddle that we're doing is trying to multiply to negative 1, add to, or multiply to negative 2, add to 1. So in order to get to a negative, I have to use a positive and a negative. So I'm going to use a 2 and a negative 1. Now 2 times negative 1 does equal negative 2, and then 2 plus negative 1 does stay at positive 1. So my 2 
factors are x plus 2, x minus 1. And now we'll do a little mental math. What number plus 2 is equal to 0? That would mean x has to equal negative 2. What number minus 1 equals 0? x has to equal 1. So I head back to my solutions, put in my answer of 2, put in my answer of negative 1, and there we'll see our work. Oh, I uh, should have put in uh, negative 2, negative 1. There's my short-term memory kicking in. But you get the picture. Uh, those were the two solutions we had. I just uh, uh, misput the negative 2, positive 1. So sorry about that, but those would be the two solutions. So those solutions are going to match. Lastly, we'll look at, look at a special case where uh, we'll get uh, what's called the difference of squares. And I'll talk a little bit more about difference of squares, too. So this is what we looked at when we looked at uh, factoring day two with the difference of squares. So first thing we'll do is get this 6x subtracted over, which will give us x squared minus 16 equals 0. So you'll notice I don't have an x term in the middle because 6x minus 6x is going to cancel out to make nothing. So here we have a special case called a difference of squares. So back in day two, when we foiled out um, two binomials that had the exact same numbers, but one was a, a adding and one was a subtracting, what will happen is you'll get your outside and inside terms to cancel. So we'll get a squared minus ab plus ab minus b squared, which every single time a situation like that happens, is you'll get those outside terms and inside terms to cancel, and you're left with just a squared minus b squared. So anytime we have two terms where both uh, we have a perfect square x squared and we have a perfect square of 16, we're going to get that difference of squares. So now heading back to the problem, uh, if I have an x squared minus 16, that's going to leave me with x plus 4 x minus 4. And you kind of think, where am I getting that 4 from? Well, if you take the square root of 16, that's going to be 4. And that's going to then be my number that I use in my difference of squares. And again, we'll now set both of those equal to 0, which I'm just going to do mental math. So what number plus 4 equals 0? That's going to be negative 4. And then what number minus 4 equals 0? That's going to be a 4. So when I head to my answer, Hopefully I do it right this time. I'm going to go negative 4, comma, positive 4. And those will be my two solutions. And there we go. My brain is back on track working again. And there we go. Negative 4 and 4 would be my, my two solutions. So there are some examples of using the zero product property. But in each case, you're going to want to set your quadratic equal to 0. Once you get your two factors, set both those factors equal to 0 and then you can solve each one. And most of the time, you'll be able to just use mental math to find those zeros. So thanks for joining for day three. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.